So today we're having a quick chat with Steph Tabone from AHR. She's here at Gap Mag Tech with her colleagues to talk about cover crops specifically. Uh, so Steph, welcome to Ausveg. Good to see you and congratulations on your enough world. That's Thank you. amazing. Um, what, what are you showcasing here today? So at the Ag Tech showcase, we have um, a cover crop demonstration with seven different uh, mixes slash single species of cover crops each of them demonstrating different things and the idea here is to bring diversity so diversity of what each of them can do uh, their different root systems the benefits they might bring uh, to yeah to a farming system so some of them are clearly cool season some of them are a bit more tropical where would you use those and in what situations yeah so uh, the choice of cover crops really depends on the growers situation whether you want them to fix nitrogen into your system whether it's for weed management uh, or to, just to provide general organic matter and, and biomass to put into the system. Um, so you can see here we've got a, a legume mixed species cover crop with sun hemp, which is the tall one with um, yellow flowers, uh, a cowpea and a lab lab, which are sort of sitting in the understory here. Um, so all three of these are legumes, so great for adding nitrogen to your system. Um, yeah, the key thing I guess to, to do with legumes is around inoculating them with the right rhizobia to make sure that uh, you can maximise the benefits of, um, of nitrogen addition into your farming system. So it also has soil health benefits in terms of microbial activity and so on too? Doesn't yeah, of course. Every time you put um, a living material, uh, living plants into your system, uh, they help to feed the microbes in the soil and also uh, their root systems bring a range of different um, benefits, particularly around uh, creating a, a beneficial uh, soil structure. So. So the cool season mix clearly oats and vetch. The vetch is the purple flower from memory? That's right, yeah, vetch. Um, we've got a cereal rye or a rye corn and in the understory we've got some, some oats here. Uh, so they're a good mix uh, to have incompatibility with each other. As you can see, the vetch is sort of climbing up the cereals. Um, yeah. So if you, if you were to look quite deep into, uh, into the cover crop, you probably wouldn't see many weeds. So it's helped to quite, really quite shade out the weeds um, and create a bit of competition there from that point. Um, and then the vetch also will add a, a bit of nitrogen into the system. So, so the end one here, the one cut the next, what's its functioning? Then? Yeah, so a lot of different to the, the other warm <laughs> season one. So this warm uh, species mix is has 10 or so different species in it. It um, A lot of growers are interested in growing mixes. I guess uh, they bring a lot of benefits from the point of um, each of them will establish at different times and will phase out at different times and they each have uh, different things that they can bring to the system, different root systems, different functions. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's quite a lot going on here. So there's a lot to consider when you're growing a mixed species. Um, often the seed might be more expensive because you've got so many different species in one. Uh, but with that, you need to consider, are they all going to come up? Is it worth the, the establishment and the effort going into growing a mix if, you're, if you've only got a short window? Um, so. They're a bit harder to manage. You have to be careful about um, hosting diseases and, and pests because of the diversity of things here. So yeah. just need to be considered uh, when you're growing them in rotation with veggies. Right, so things like um, whole army worm that might love maize, for example. Yeah. Be which cover crop you use so that you're not encouraging more yeah. population. Yeah, I guess like for this example, we have quite a few, um, we have a tillage radish, a leafy turnip, and a forage rape all in the brassica family. So if you're a brassica grower and you've got really big issues with, um, for example, club root, um, it's probably worth considering whether this mix is appropriate for you or not because it might host um, certain you know, pests and diseases. You might be making it worse. So in terms of management of the cover crops as a generic statement, let them get to a specific height and then with some of them you can cut for baling and, and livestock foliage feed, can you not? Uh, so I guess in terms of management of your cover crop, depends on the window that you have. If you have a short period of time, uh, your cover crop probably won't get to the stage um, of some of these. And also if it gets too tall, you have to think about how you're going to manage that biomass back into your system. Um, you don't want to undo all the hard work you've just put into building the soil because you've grown a, a big buffy cover crop that can't be um, incorporated back into the soil. So it's about managing it and fitting it within your system. Um, and timing is everything with cover crops. So just doing your research, asking questions, reach out to, um, to us at the Soil Wealth and Integrated Crop Protection Project. Um, and we'd be happy to talk through your specific scenario and what works for your system. Marvellous. Thank you so much, Steph, for your time today. Thanks. That's awesome. Thanks, Deb.